Welcome to this mini course on Beat Apple's iOS 14 for free. Um, iOS 14 has obviously affected everyone's ability to track ads correctly, but there is a ton of misinformation thrown around on how to improve your tracking, mostly accumulating and having to buy big expensive products. So this mini course is being provided to help you improve your ad tracking for free and keep more money in your pocket. And this mini course was put together with the help of Sergio Monzo, Facebook project manager, and Mark Douglas, the CEO of the online digital marketing agency, The Mental Marketer. So let's jump right in. Is this the end? Are Facebook ads going to die? What is all the fuss about? What is this iOS 14 update? So let me give you a simple explanation. Now, Apple now gives its users the option to opt out of allowing apps to attract to track your activity. So every time someone downloads an app, a prompt similar to this will come up asking the user if they would like to allow the app to track their activity. Now, why is this such a huge deal for Facebook? Well, because Facebook relies heavily on ads and ad revenue. And one of the biggest reasons Facebook is such an attractive ad platform is because of the enormous amount of data it collects on its users. Some of the data they collect tracks users across the web to understand how they behave and how likely they are to respond to specific ads. So Facebook really knows down to the granular level what actions users are most likely to take. And they get this data by tracking users' activities across the web. So for example, Facebook will know how likely I am to buy an online course just based on my previous behavior. Now this data is a gold mine for advertisers because the more accurate information being used for the ads, they can pinpoint target the exact customers and in turn lowering the cost for running ads, resulting in lower ad costs and higher profit margins. With this new update to Apple software, there's now a dark spot in Facebook's tracking that affects how Facebook is able to target and find the people most likely to respond to an ad. A small change in data might not seem like a lot on the surface, but when you're spending tens of thousands of dollars daily on ads, even the smallest change can significantly, significantly impact and a business's bottom line. Now keep in mind that this only applies to people using Apple products and not Android or other systems. However, this is still a huge problem for Facebook because a good percentage of users are using Apple and not everyone, but certainly a good percentage will choose to opt out of being tracked. It's, Im it's important to note that if a user opts out of app tracking, you will not be able to track that person in your Facebook ads manager. Nothing will bring this back. There are some solutions where you can post back data, but this is only for post click, which you can get for free using Google Analytics. Now, how to work around this change. Remember that iOS 14 affects the app from tracking a person while using the app but that doesn't stop you from using a different platform to track a person's activity on the website. So if a user clicks on your ad, you can track that user's activity on your website in a third party platform, providing you are using UTMs. Now, what is a UTM you say? Well, UTM stands for Urchin Tracking Model. Don't let that name confuse or intimidate you. Google was once, I think, owned by a company named Urchin and they just never changed it. It's basically a way to structure your links so that you can track them. Now, I'll, sh I'll talk more and show more about structuring your links a little later. Now, third party platforms. We'll talk about Google Analytics. Now, there's a reason why it is and will always be the industry standard for tracking your digital marketing campaigns because it's a super powerful tool. Yet, if you don't know how to use it correctly, you won't get full usage from it. And don't listen to anyone who says it doesn't track Facebook properly because it's Google or any other 
uh, tinfoil theories. If you don't use it properly, you won't get the readings you want. Consistency is key to making Google Analytics work for you. Now, most e-com or website builders will have a Google Analytics plugin available, so there's no need to hard code like back in the old days. It's super simple to set up and it's free. Another software I have to mention is ClickMagic. Now, this one is not free. However, with the link down here at the bottom, you can try the software for 14 days free of charge. And I like it because you can run campaigns in ClickMagic with what's called audience optimization. And that's fully integrated with Facebook's conversion API. And it sends your actual conversion data back to Facebook in real time. So ClickMagic's tracking is not affected by any of the changes with Facebook ads due to iOS 14. So this gives you the ultimate advantage in Facebook ad optimization. It results in increased Facebook ad performance that you simply can't get any other way. Now it's a special note for using the Google's tag manager is uh, details for installing and using Google's uh, tag manager isn't the subject of this mini course, but if you're using ClickFunnels, there is a simple location where you place your Google Tag Manager. Just go to the funnel wide settings and there's a space for the body tracking code. You'll simply copy and paste your Google Tag Manager inside of this box. I've left a link to the Google Tag Manager site along with the video and instructions to help you. Now let's talk about UTM structure. I talked about UTMs before and I talked about it being a way for you to structure your links so you can track them because to get the most out of Google Analytics, it's best to have a consistent naming strategy. Simply put, if you don't keep a consistent naming strategy, the more campaigns you run, the more links you make, it'll become harder to keep them organized and understand them. So I don't know about you, but that will confuse and overwhelm me and take way more time than needed. So if you want to keep your sanity, make sure you organize your UTM structures. Now there's a number of free UTM generators to use. However, I use the granddaddy of them all, the Google's campaign URL builder. And I've, and I've included a link to it on this page. The camp, the campaign URL builder does exactly what the name says. It builds specific trackable URL campaign. Here's a quick guide on how to set up your naming conventions. The UTM source, you might name it social, newsletter, PPC, the UTM medium. You'll uh, say the medium that it's on, like Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, etc. The UTM campaign. Uh, this could be a winter or summer promotion, webinar signups, etc. And then the UTM content, use the ad set. Is it a, a image? Is it a video? Is it a text? So that's how you're going to name it to keep it organized. Here's what an example UTM parameter would look like on a live URL. Now, Facebook also has the option of creating dynamic parameters, meaning it will automatically copy and campaign and ad set names. Again, this is outside the scope of this video, but I'll leave a link here in the slides for you to access detailed instructions. It's important to note that when you make a URL parameter in Facebook, it's only applicable to the first product page. For example, if someone clicks on your ad, which directs them to your product page, that interaction will be tracked using the URL parameter you set. However, if they click out of the product page from the ad experience and come back to your product page organically later on, the URL parameter will be lost. Now, Google's free analytics course. Where can you find your data? Now, there's no way I can teach you how to get the full usage from Google Analytics in one video, but I highly recommend taking Google's free analytics courses to get up to speed on how to get the best usage from it. Again, I'll leave a link below that goes straight to the Academy. Now, Facebook conversions AB API. Now you must be wondering, now that we're collecting all this data inside of Google, how do we get this data back to Facebook to 
optimize our ads. And that's where Facebook's conversion API comes in. Now, Facebook's conversion API allows you to share data and offline events with Facebook that helps you create more relevant ads and build more meaningful connections with your customers. On Google's side, it enables you to move your data collection mechanisms from your website into a Google Cloud account. Now, when you integrate the two, this will configure your Google Tag Manager portal to send events to Facebook's Conversions API. And this will allow you to configure Google to send those events to Facebook's Conversion API. Another thing to note is that Facebook Conversion API does not bring back tracking for opted out users. However, it does improve your ability to track the users versus the pixel. I will leave a link to a video that will show you exactly how to set up that conversion API with your Google Tag Manager so that the two will communicate and you can get your tracking data from Google sent back to Facebook. And to finish, there's no need to take expensive measures. You can use the tools and data that are available for free to help you navigate the new changes. And for your convenience, I'll leave a link for you to get a copy of all the slides for this video mini course. The slides include links to all of the resources that have been mentioned in this video. Look for the link somewhere around this video and good luck with all your ad campaigns.